Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin will complete their memorable fight trilogy in September. Alvarez and Golovkin will resume their rivalry on September 17th after a four-year break, promoters Matchroom Boxing announced Tuesday. Alvarez already said he intended to take the fight while speaking at his Invitational Golf Tournament in Nalcopan, Mexico on Monday. In this video, we are going to discuss war. Canelo vs. Golovkin just got official. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. But before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Alvarez, who holds all four major belts at super middleweight, stepped up to light heavyweight earlier this month, but was beaten by Russian Dmitry Bivol in only the second loss of his career. The pair have met twice before, with the first fight ending in a split decision draw, while Canelo came out on top in the rematch by majority decision. The fighters met in 2017 and again in 2018 for two highly entertaining middleweight matchups. They fought to a split draw in the first bout, and Alvarez won a narrow majority decision in the second meeting. The first fight between Canelo and GGG was a fight to be remembered for the ages as both the boxers traded several big shots throughout the 12 rounds. However, after 12 rounds of action, the judges could not come to an agreement on scoring. One judge scored the bout 115 to 113 in favor of Golovkin. Meanwhile, one judge had it 114-114, and the final judge scored the bout 118 to 110 in favor of Canelo. Unlike the first matchup, Canelo was aggressive as he attacked Gennady with some good body shots early in the fight. However, GGG did not allow the Mexican middleweight to settle as he landed numerous jabs to win several rounds. It was a close contest with both middleweights showing their incredible skill set in front of a jam-packed stadium. In the end, the judges declared Canelo the winner via a unanimous decision. Both battles took place in Las Vegas, and a venue for the trilogy bout will be revealed soon. The third fight will be a 168-pound super middleweight contest between the 40-year-old Golovkin, who's 42 and 1 and 1 with 37 knockouts, and Alvarez, who's 57 and 2 and 2 with 39 knockouts, who will turn 32 this summer. This will be the first time Golovkin has moved up in weight, having spent the entirety of his career at middleweight, where he is currently the unified IBF and WBA champion. Earlier in the year, Alvarez signed a two-fight deal with DAZN, with the first fight against Bivol for the WBA lightweight heavyweight title, and the second and third meeting with Golovkin. DAZN Group is one of the fastest-growing sports media companies in the world. DAZN Group is home to DAZN, the leading global sport destination, as well as the popular sport portal DAZN News. DAZN is leading the charge to give sports fans around the world access to sport anytime, anywhere. After Bivol upset Alvarez on May 7th, turning a stellar performance in outboxing the man who entered the fight as boxing's pound-for-pound -pound king, it appeared Alvarez would choose to rematch Bivol rather than take on Golovkin. This does not rule out a rematch with Bivol, as promoter Eddie Hearn has previously said the Golovkin fight is now or never, and then Canelo can rematch the Russian in May next year. Kazakhstan's Golovkin, 40, has won four consecutive fights since losing to Alvarez. In his last outing, Golovkin defeated Ryota Murata via technical knockout to unify the IBF and WBA world middleweight titles. Canelo, on the other hand, has moved up a division since beating Golovkin. Both battles took place in Las Vegas, and while a venue for the trilogy bout will be revealed soon, what is in no doubt is that it will be the hottest ticket in the sport when these two foes dance for the third and decisive time. I feel very happy and proud to be able to give the best fights, and this fight won't be an exception, said Alvarez. Golovkin added, I hope to see you on September 17th. The Canelo vs. GGG trilogy is the biggest fight in boxing, and I'm delighted to get this made for September 17th," said Eddie Hearn, chairman of Matchroom Boxing. There are two men that bitterly dislike each other and want to end this incredible series with a blistering knockout. I truly believe this will be the most thrilling fight between these two great champions and will be fireworks from the first bell to the last man standing. 
The third bout is likely the richest fight currently possible in boxing, given both fighters' large fan bases and the entertaining nature of their rivalry to date. Golovkin and his fans believe the former middleweight kingpin won both of the first two fights, while Alvarez is in need of redemption after a shocking loss to Vivol. In the fighter's first bout, most ringside observers thought Golovkin had done more than enough to beat Alvarez, who had previously lost only to Floyd Mayweather in his career. Both fighters initially expressed interest in the third meeting for 2019, but the sides drifted apart while Golovkin dealt with management squabbles and Alvarez moved on to a less daunting challenges. Hearn said Alvarez's revised boxing slate likely nixes plans for Alvarez to take the third fight this year in December, since he would fight Bivol in 2023. In their May 7th match, the bigger Bivol, 20-0, dominated Alvarez and scored a unanimous decision win, 115-113 on all three scorecards at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas to retain his World Boxing Association light heavyweight 175 pounds belt. A rematch against Bivol will likely take place next year on Cinco de Mayo weekend. In the meantime, Bivol could defend the WBA title against mandatory challenger Gilberto Ramirez. But there would be no late heroics against Bivol who pressured Alvarez relentlessly throughout the bout and never appeared to be hurt seriously by the Mexican, who struggled to get past Bivol's guard. He hurt my arm, Bivol said, displaying a bruised upper arm that absorbed a string of punches. I felt his power, you can see on my arm. He beat my arm up, but not my head. All three judges, Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfield, scored the bout 115-113 to for Bivol. I proved myself today, I'm the best in my division," Bivol said. Golden Boy Promotions President Eric Gomez told The Ring before Ramirez's knockout win over Germany's Dominic Bosel on May 14th that they will follow through to have the WBA mandate Bivol defend the world title belt against Ramirez later this year. We already had that contract with Golovkin, that settlement, so we've got to proceed what we began, and I feel these are the two largest fights in boxing the combat with Golovkin, and the rematch with Bivol. Alvarez stated at a press convention, which passed off on Monday to advertise an enterprise in response to ESPN Deportes. Sadly, we misplaced, however, that that does not imply I'm not going to attempt once more. The essential factor right here is perseverance, and we will do it once more. What is for certain is that we're going to return in September, and within the coming days, we're going to announce the combat. Canelo Alvarez told he must fight against David Benavides to be the true king shortly after the event. Alvarez failed two drug tests just three days apart in 2018 when he tested positive for the banned substance Clenbitrol. He attributed his positive tests on both February 17th and February 20th to tainted meat consumed in Mexico. The pair renewed their rivalry later that year, with Alvarez having his hand raised after being awarded a narrow majority decision. Golovkin was again angered by the final results, and he felt he deserved the nod. The Kazakh star has since ignited a renewed war of words. If he believes it was something I said and that it was personal, where has he been all these years? Three or four years already, Golovkin told Ariel Helwani. If it's personal, what is he even waiting for? I have not said anything bad. Whatever has been said was tied to those scandals, and he was the cause of those scandals. There were arguments and proof. It's not me. It's the entire world. If he believes I'm talking shit. That's the entire world using the arguments and everything can be proven. For him to be making arguments now and framing it in this way is kind of low, I would say. It's kind of mean. It's indecent behavior, and I do not have any hate. I honestly don't talk about him at all. Let us know your opinion in the comments section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.